64 gigabytes of RAM and four terabytes of storage. Now, you can get it now. Uh, they've got an Indiegogo going on and they have early bird pricing. And that early bird pricing starts at six. that sort of thing. Don't feel, I don't think this is a keyboard you'd be doing a lot of major typing on, but again, it allows that quick access altogether. Now, in terms of audio, um, the speakers are really good for its size. So how about you guys take a listen? So in terms of audio, uh, the speakers sound really good, uh, but what about sound from the fan? Is it loud, is it overbearing while you're gaming? I don't think so. I think it can get, it can get a little bit loud, but not something that's crazy that will break off your gameplay. It's definitely not as loud as a gaming laptop uh, in that regards, but take a listen for yourself. So a cool thing that Ioneer has worked on over the years is their gaming software, which has been greatly improved. That orange button, you can tap that to access that, and you do have a couple of things here. You can go in to check, check change the TDP of the device. Usually I leave it at uh, 25, works pretty well. You can expand the uh, uh, FPS ratings. You can also have a performance overlay if you want to, uh, that kind of thing. And also you can actually set the game up for either AAA games, retro games, normal games that kind of stuff more options into like just the custom ability of the display um, some motion custom ability controllers as well so again it's pretty flexible on what you can actually do with uh, the software uh, itself speaking of retro games uh, just to show you one example here 
PSP game, God of War, uh, Chains of Olympus, runs really well on this. Uh, I was getting uh, sometimes 70 frames per second, a little higher, uh, with the settings that you see on screen. It handles the game well, and I think it will run your retro games uh, quite well. Looking at other games like um, Red Dead Redemption 2, that also got some really solid performance all across the board. And I think you will find a lot of games will play well on this device. That is not the issue because we know this processor can handle stuff. The main thing is, are you looking for something that looks like a standard gaming device or can change into something like this? That is the question. And does it actually work well as a device that has a slide out keyboard? And I think it does. Um, I think that it just brings a very unique look and take to it. Yes, it is a six inch display and that might be a difference breaker for some people. But for me, I do like it because it's compact, it's easy to carry around. Uh, there is a carrying case uh, that you can get with it as well. It's $29.99 uh, on the uh, Indiegogo page. I've been using the Air Neo Air case, uh, which is also a much smaller device. Uh, and that kind of works, at least for me for now. But overall, I do like this device. Now, my only big gripe is the price point because for a lot of gamers going up to about $1,500 uh, $1, at its official retail price is a bit steep on this and starting at $899 with just 512 gigabytes of storage. That being said though, you can get the $899 version and you can upgrade it yourself. It would take a, a full size NVMe if you want to and you can swap that out and expand it yourself at a cheaper price point. So let me know guys, what do you think about the Aya Neo slide? Is this something you, you think it's worth picking up for you? Um, do you think it's a great performer? I do like the performance of this. It's definitely better than uh, the uh, Steam Deck OLED in some instances. Again, I'm getting 110 frames per second on Doom Eternal. I haven't gotten that on the Steam Deck OLED, but then again, it is a six inch display instead of the much larger display those other devices have. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.